Hi everyone. Welcome to this video on getting started with the Syncfusion Flutter range charts. In this video, you will see how to add the Syncfusion Flutter charts package to a Flutter project and add the Cartesian chart widget to it. You will learn how to set a data source to the chart and how to add a range column series to it. Then I will explain how to customize the primary axis, enable data labels, show legends, enable tooltips, and add a title in the range column series chart. Finally, I will show you how the other range chart series like range area, spline range area, and hilo work. First, open the VS Code editor. You can also use an IDE you prefer such as Android Studio or IntelliJ. This computer was already set up with the Flutter development environment, which allows me to run the application in mobile, web, and desktop devices. Now I can directly create a new Flutter project. Open the command palette and create a new Flutter project. Choose a folder to create the project in. Name the project My Flutter App. VS Code creates the Flutter project for you. Run this application in the Android simulator. You can also use the terminal to run the project. You can see the application with a button widget at the bottom and a text widget at the center. When you click the button, the click count is updated in the text widget. Now, let me show you how to add a range column chart in this app in place of the text and button widgets. To do so, first, I need to import the Syncfusion Flutter Charts package from the pub.dev website. So, open the pub spec YAML file and declare the dependency Syncfusion underscore Flutter underscore charts using the latest version. When you save the file, VS Code runs the command Flutter pub git to download the package. The download is completed now. Next, open the main.dart file. Import the charts.dart library so that you can use the chart widget in this file. Let's write the range column chart related code within the my homepage state class. Remove the code in the my homepage state class for better clarity. Override the build method and within the build method, return a safe area widget to render the chart within the usable area. To its child, set a scaffold widget so that you can assign the material design to your application. To the scaffold's body, set the SF Cartesian chart widget so that you can add the range column series to it. Save the file. The hot reload feature loads the application in the Android emulator. You can see the Syncfusion Flutter chart rendered with default X and Y axis in my application. Now, let me show you how to create a range column chart for sample temperature variation data. Create a class named Chart Sample Data. Create a field of type datetime, name it X, and create a double field to store high values. Do the same for low values. Create a constructor for this class that receives the parameters X, high, and low. Next, I need to create a chart data source and bind it to the chart. To do so, create a method that returns a list of chart sample data, get chart data. Within it, return a collection of chart sample data. Here I have set average monthly temperature variation data. To assign this data to the chart, in the My Homepage State class, declare a field of type list of chart sample data. To initialize the chart data field, override the initState method. Within it, initialize the chart data by calling the method getChartData, which will return the temperature data collection. Now, in the SF Cartesian chart widget, set the series with a range column series collection and set the range column series by passing the types as chart sample data and date time. Set its data source property with the chart data object we just created. Next, you need to map the data for the X value and high and low values. So, use the X value mapper property and set the X field. This will plot all the date values on the X axis in the chart. In the same way, use the high value mapper property and set the high field. Do the same for the low field too. Since the primary x-axis value contains category values, which are the date-time values, you need to set the primary x-axis as a date-time axis so that the Cartesian chart can understand its x-axis type. Now, everything is set. Save the file to see the changes in the chart. You can see the candle chart in the application. The x-axis holds the date values, and the y-axis holds the temperature values. Since I am showing temperature data, I need to format it as degree Celsius. To do this, first add the primary y-axis property, set the numeric axis class, and set the label format property with the string value suffixed by degree Celsius. I use the numeric axis because the y-axis value type is double. 
I will explain the chart axis types in a later video. Now, save the file, and you can see the y-axis values are formatted as degree Celsius values. You can notice here that the x-axis labels are not aligned properly. To render it properly in the chart area, in the chart widget's x-axis property, set the edge label placement property with the value edge label placement dot shift. Save the file now to see the changes in the axis. You can see all the values are rendered properly in the chart area. Notice here that the values in the x-axis are displayed as month and day. Let me format these as just month values, since the data we're using is monthly average temperature variations. To access the date format class, import the package intel.dart. In the primary x-axis property, set the date format with the date format class's MMM constructor. I also need to set the interval type. I set it to month, but you can also set it to auto, days, hours, minutes, seconds, and years. Now, save the file, and you can see the x-axis values are formatted as month values with three-letter abbreviations, along with intervals in months. Let me remove the x-axis major grid lines. Add the major grid lines property, and set the major grid lines class by passing the width property with value 0. Save the file, and you can see the x-axis major grid lines are removed from the chart. We will now add data labels to the chart. To do so, in the range column series class, set the data label settings property with the data label settings class and set the is visible property to true so that the data labels will be visible in the chart. Also, you can add other settings like alignment, angle, and many more. For this example, I'll keep the data label simple and then save the file. You can now see the data labels in the chart. You can also show legends in the chart by adding the legend property in the chart with the legend class and setting the is visible property to true. Save the file and you will be able to see the legend at the bottom of the chart. You can see the name is series 0 since this is the first item in the chart series collection. You can change the series name by setting the name property in the range column series class. After setting the name property, save the file and you can see the series name changes to temperature. Let me show you how to enable tooltips in the range column series. First, I need to create a tooltip behavior object and assign it to the chart. So, in the My Homepage State class, declare a field of type tooltip behavior. And in the init state method, initialize the tooltip behavior object with the tooltip behavior class and set the enable property to true. Now, in the SF Cartesian chart widget, add the tooltip behavior property and set the tooltip behavior field. This enables tooltips in the chart widget. Now, restart the application. Tap on a data point to see the tooltip. Next, let me show you how to add a title to the chart. In the SF Cartesian chart widget, add the title property, set the chart title widget, and set its text property with a title. You can also add alignment, background color, border color, and text style properties. Save the file to see the changes. The provided title is now shown in the chart widget. Let me show you how this data looks when I use the range area series. Change the range column series to the range area series. All the properties we've used so far are supported by the range area series as well. Save the file to see the changes. You can see the range area series in the chart. Next, let me show you how to render a spline range area series. Change the range area series to spline range area series. Save the file to see the changes. You can see the spline range area series in the chart. For a final chart series demonstration, let me show you how the same data looks when I use the high-low series. Change the spline range area series to high-low series and save the file to see the high-low series rendered in the chart. Let's see how the same code works in a web browser. I'll stop the application, change the device name to Chrome, and run the application. We can see the high-low series chart is exactly as it was before, only in the Google Chrome browser this time. Finally, let me show you how this app works on the desktop. Stop the application. Change the device to Windows and run the application. We can see the high-low series chart in a system window. That's it. Let me summarize the main points of this video. You saw how to add the Sync Fusion Flutter Charts widget to a Flutter project. You learned how to set a data source to the chart and then plot the data as a range column series. You also learned how to customize the primary axis, 
enable data labels, show legends, enable tooltips, and add a title in the rank column series chart. Finally, you learn how the other range chart series like range area, spline range area, and hilo work using the same data. You can download this working example from the GitHub link and the documentation link in the video description below. You'll also find a link where you can check if you are eligible for our community license, which gives you a free license key to use our Flutter products. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to our channel to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching.